Bob came to join me. All right, where was I? The beginning of the avalanche of disaster. Uh, a little more context. Uh, it was like the 4th of July weekend, so a little over a month ago. And I had a bunch of baby chicks. I, uh, I you know, posted on uh, some groups on one of the big, uh, big social media sites, uh, making them available. And within three hours, they were all accounted for. Not everybody followed through on that. But, uh, so yeah, I made a trip into uh into russellville and uh rehomed a bunch of baby chicks and a couple of my young pullets and i was on on the top of the world there was a demand for my product uh, and uh and i was meeting the demand and it was wonderful so i was um yeah i was confident that yeah i'm gonna make this uh chicken breeding operation work uh so that all started falling apart. The uh, the eggs that I had gotten from Deer Run Farm, if you'll recall, if you have already told you this story, see, uh, uh, a few months ago I got some some hatching eggs, four dozen from Deer Run Farm in Maryland. Uh, Bob's still on my lap, uh, and they were damaged in shipping. I was able to ha hatch four Welsomers out of those and seven Morans. Um, Deer Run Farm is very well known, especially for Welsmers. Uh, they acquired, it was uh, Whitmore Farms way back when, was the original farm that brought the Welsomers, uh, they're a Dutch breed, so they brought them to America uh, from Europe. And so that was the original farm uh, that brought them, that imported them here. And Deer Run Farm took them over just a few years ago. But Deer Run Farm is excellent, excellent to deal with. I would definitely do business with them. Uh, they go above and beyond to make you happy. And uh, so I got a replacement uh, eggs from them. I'll put a link down to their, their below. Um, they sent me a bunch of, uh, I had like 38 that I went to, that went into an incubator. And I bought a brand new incubator uh, just for those eggs, uh, very similar to two others. So. Uh, those eggs went into the incubator. They were due to hatch, you know, that weekend when I was on the top of my game, as it were, uh, you know, selling out in three hours, and only two, two of the eggs hatched. There were, you know, 38 that went into the incubator and only two hatched, one Moran and one Welsmer. And that was all my fault. That was all my fault. Um, it was a new incubator. It was very similar to the other styrofoam types that I have. So I just, I, you know, I thought, hey, I've got this figured out. Uh, the temperature on the new one, you know, it's set and it's so easy. You don't have to monkey with that. You just have to uh, 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 calibrate it when you first get started with, uh, with another, another one. What I messed up on was the humidity. And uh, it's so humid here in the summer that you do not need to add any extra water to create more humidity in there. And um, and so, yeah, I messed that up and only two of them hatched. So that was, you know, I was counting, I was counting on those to, uh, to grow up, to have enough hens that I could produce enough eggs to hatch in the spring uh, to make a living off of that. So that was a huge old bummer. And you know, being poor, I don't have any extra money to just go to just go uh, buy some more eggs from them. And I didn't want eggs from just anybody. Uh, you know, they have a great reputation, and I would like to have a good reputation as far as uh, the birds that people get from me. So, um, so yeah, I couldn't just go order more of those, even if I did have the money. They do not ship during the summer because it's too hot. So they do not ship eggs, hatching eggs, or baby chicks during the summer. Um, and I can definitely see why with the baby chicks. Uh, you know, it can be well over 100 degrees, one of those mail trucks, I would think, as they're being transported. So they don't, uh, they don't offer any again until September. So even if I would have had the money to try to replace those, they're not going to be available until uh, September. And uh, so yeah, that, that 
that was a bummer and that started the avalanche of disaster so the next thing that happened was I lost my first adult chickens to a predator that is what happened next um, in that flock behind me am I even pointing in the right direction that's Larry uh, Mary none of the none of the chickens that I have named were lost so that was uh, that was fortunate I guess but I did um, you know I've been here well over two years now with chickens and I did lose three baby chicks that were kind of free-ranging I uh, that was a failed experiment I don't know what got them but as far as my adult chickens I had never lost an adult chicken to a predator uh, because of the electric fencing so why didn't the electric fencing work this time uh, probably yeah that, that's my neglect that was my neglect I have oh, see this is a long story I have two fences out here with the two flocks and there's an outlet right here so I had my weakest I have three energizers that power the electric uh, fencing and I had my weakest one out here with these two uh, fences and what happens when you uh, when the brush comes up and you know one of those tall weeds falls over on top of your fence well it uh, it loses the energy it loses the electricity and I you know didn't double check that night um, I think that was a Monday night and that weekend I just you know rehomed uh, lots and lots of, of chickens but so yeah I went out in the morning and um, and there were six there were six that were gone three of my pullets that I had been raising to uh, to make available um, you know those were worth something they weren't part of my breeding plans but they would have paid for my uh, feed for a month probably um, so I lost three of my olivator pullets I lost one of my three welsomer hens um, she was in there uh, and that's a big blow to go from three to two um, I also lost one of my three uh, second generation olivator hens my prized three hens that lay the big darker uh, the real olive eggs I lost one of those three hens and then uh, I had uh, I also lost a whiting true blue cockerel um, a young one he was probably four or five months old but he was the one that I had selected uh, to raise up and then he was going to replace either Larry or Junior in my breeding program eventually but he was the one that I had chosen I liked his coloring he had the the sideburns going on and um, so he was one of my selected uh, cockerels for my breeding program so that was six uh, six chickens that I lost from that flock uh, it's um, that was a big blow the Welsomer uh, it could have been worse you know I didn't lose Mary Tyler Moore or Private Benjamin my two white and true blues I didn't lose Larry he's my champion rooster uh, uh, for that breed right now um, but losing the the Welsomer and the and that second generation Olivager uh, that's you know 33 percent of my of my breeding plans so that was a big blow. Uh, what happened was the, the fence just wasn't energized. I had my weakest energizer on there and um, somehow a predator got through the fence and it also got in into the coop. Um, you know, my coops aren't uh, really designed to keep predators out because I've got the electric fencing. That all changed after that night. So, uh, so the next day, uh, I had to rearrange my fencing, I rearranged my energizers, I've got a tester, you know, that tests how much uh, electricity is going through the fences, and, you know, it was 101 degrees that next day, uh, but I had to rearrange these fences, and I moved around my energizers so that I had a more powerful energizer here, and, um, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, 101 degrees I'm moving the fences around I'm doing a lot of weed eating I had to 
pull out the weed eater and you know make sure there wasn't any weed pressure on the fences so that the charge would uh, go through um, you know and that's that's a lot of anybody who's moved those fences by themselves in this area with the rocks you got to jab it into the ground about 10 times before you can find a space where it doesn't hit a rock and it can go down uh, three or four inches so that was just that that wiped me out um, but I rearranged the energizers I got the fencing up I did the tester everything was good and I was just worn out and exhausted but you know I I knew this was gonna happen someday I knew uh, something was gonna happen where I'm gonna lose a bunch of chickens to a predator I just I've always known it's it's gonna happen <laughs> especially when I got a national forest right there and you know I'm uh, it's it was it was bound to happen it was a matter of time um, but I uh, so I was prepared for it somewhat but it, it hit me like a ton of bricks um, because I had already lost the uh, uh, the hatching eggs that I had planned on on using so that was blow number two to my uh, to my make a living plans for next spring uh, blow number three happened that next night on the upside I had a, a broody hen uh, one of number two's kids 2.1 uh, she had gone broody and I had some white and true blue purebred eggs in an incubator uh, I wanted to make sure that her broodiness was going to stick. Sometimes they'll, uh, you know, they'll stay in the nest box all night long, and um, so I wanted that to happen three nights, and then I'll I figure, okay, if she's been spending the night in the nest box for three nights, I'll know that she's sticking with it. And so I took uh, seven eggs out of my little round uh, yellow incubator. Uh, they were about eight days away from hatching. So I put those seven eggs under her on that third night uh, that she was broody, uh, and I figured, all right, we'll we'll let her hatch them, and she can be a first-time mama, and you know that'll be good. That'll save me from uh, you know having to do the brooder and and all that stuff. Uh, the next morning, I went out there, and all seven eggs were gone. Yep, snake. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. I figured it was a snake at the time because that's usually what happens. That's when the snakes show up is when I start leaving eggs in nesting boxes overnight. Uh, so all seven of those white and true blue purebreds that were also going to be part of my breeding program uh, that I needed for the spring, uh, those were all gone the next morning. Uh, you know, it didn't even make it 12 hours. And so that was... Uh, that was another blow. I did catch the snake the very next night. I caught the snake and uh, it's not a problem anymore. It was a big uh, black rat snake. Um, but yeah, the next night I went out there and it was just waiting in the nesting box. Because, uh, uh, yeah, normally I don't leave eggs in nesting boxes overnight for that very reason. And, uh, you know, there's really not much I can do to protect against snakes. They're going to get through the electric fence. It doesn't phase them. And again, my coops are really not snake proof because they sit on the ground. The frame sits on the ground and the, the ground isn't 100% flat. So I would have to, and I, you know, I, I plan on moving the coops around. So, you know, that's just not, uh, not feasible for me to make the coops snake proof. And, you know, it's a uh, cost of doing business out here across the street from a national forest and I found that I've you know I've caught snakes before and it's always it's always been when I've got a broody hen sitting on eggs because I do not leave eggs in the nesting boxes overnight and I think that really helps uh, prevent uh, uh, losing a bunch of eggs to snakes uh, but anyway so yeah that was another blow. I, uh, I was counting on them to hatch. I was counting on getting two or three hens out of that. I was counting on those hens to be part of my, uh, part of my breeding program to offer chicks in the spring. So that was a blow. And, uh, and then we get to the next day. So the first night I lost six. Uh, the next night I lost uh, the seven eggs that were only about a week away from hatching. 
and then we get to the the third night of the avalanche of disaster I came out about 7:30 at night and I'm, I'm not gonna say any more about this so don't even ask but there was an accident with uh, with my electric fence and an energizer um, something got tangled in the fencing the ends I have uh, well let's go look at let's go look at what I'm about to describe right here I have three of the electric fences all connected together uh, two of the fences go out in this direction and they protect these two coops and then uh, the third fence goes in this direction and that's Dragonberry in there. So I've got three fences here running off the same Energizer and what happened was something got, uh, there was an accident and the ends of the electric fence uh, those two ends, uh, that those sections basically just got ripped completely apart. Um, and so, yeah, that was bad. And I had, uh, it was a different Energizer out here at the time. Uh, this is my solar Energizer. It runs off of a battery, but it's got a solar panel that recharges the battery. I had moved this Energizer up uh up to the other one because this one is stronger than the one i was using so i had my uh i had a different energizer out here but it got smashed so and i discovered this at about 7 30 at night um and yeah there was really there was really nothing i could do um i lost the energizer and even if i did have the energizer the fencing had been shredded so the the charge wasn't going to be very strong going through it if it went through it at all um and then that night i lost a bunch more chickens this is dragonberry the welsomer rooster and this is his flock i have uh had uh what 15 olivager uh, pullets and hens in here with them and you can see that's uh, that's where the energizer was so that night I lost it did not get into the coop uh, but I lost three of my third generation Olivegar pullets that I also plan on using for my breeding program uh, so it was uh, probably a raccoon as we now know had been able to reach through the chicken wire uh, to get at three of them and you know sometimes you'll find the bodies and sometimes all you see are a few feathers left but I won't get into detail there so I lost three more hens uh, that night I didn't have an energizer to protect this and uh, and that's just that's what happened is I lost three so I was scrambling to rearrange all of the fencing and I'm gonna go sit back down.